did a uh, heated, heated discussion around some of the uh, 40 gig and 100 gig uh, single mode objectives, uh, especially on the, uh, between the two optics vendors, uh, Finazar and Opnex. So that was fun to watch. Uh, we called it the Chris and Matt show, uh, which was uh, kind of ongoing offline and during the meetings. Draft 1.0 is finished. I have a whole other slide on that one because it's such a significant uh, thing that's happened. And basically, uh, the bottom line is that we're on schedule for uh, 2010. Now, an interesting thing is that um, there's already demand for things that are outside the official project. So that's actually OK. It's OK for things to happen outside the IEEE uh, or to happen later, like for uh, 10 gig Ethernet, uh, 10 G based T happened you know, five years after the standard or so. Uh, the good thing is that the architecture is really flexible, so it allows for a lot of extensions, and there are things that have been put in there for future technology. So uh, we can expect a lot of MSAs. MSAs are multi-source agreements uh, where basically a bunch of people get together and do something. Uh, and uh, again, that's okay for it to happen outside the IEEE. The IEEE is really responsible for defining a standard and architecture and uh, less responsible for specific implementation decisions. So draft 1.0 is here. Uh, everyone's pretty excited about that. Uh, it's a really, really significant milestone because it captures all the technical objectives. Now, um, I was going over my slides with some of our standards guys, and they were chastising it for me for not having read the entire document. And it's, OK, it's 202, uh, 292 pages long. And they're like, well, you know, the question that you just asked is answered on page 75, clause 2 or something. But I don't know. I haven't read it. So um, apparently, it is long and very detailed. So uh, draft two will be technically complete. And I just want to kind of talk about um, you know, where we're going. And, and people ask me all the time, you know, when is it going to be ready? And, and when are we going to see product? So I just kind of want to, I don't want to sound, um, uh, you know, basically, you know, we're not quite there yet. I don't want to sound uh, negative. But I just want to you know, caution people that there is some hype uh, around 100 gig and 40 gig. And that there's still a lot of stuff that could change. Uh, so basically, 1.0 is captures all the objectives, but you know, when you have something on paper and then you go and actually try and build it, there's stuff that's going to come up. And the IEEE cro calls this uh, crossing the I's and dying the T's. Uh, see, they do have a sense of humor. And then there's, uh, there's always a careful balance between you know, market timing and the standards process and compliance. So there's three drafts that are going to come out, 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. And each one will be more and more of a standard. So as time progresses, there's more of a certainty of being standards compliant if you base your implementation on draft two versus draft one or draft three versus draft two or something like that. But uh, people can actually start to evaluate you know, what it's going to take, how they're going to do it, and start uh, at least scoping out the implementation based on draft one. Uh, so that is the good news. Here's a summary of the uh, reach objectives and specifications. This is a, an old slide. The difference is that uh, the solution has now been defined. So um, for example, we're still trying to figure out, is 100 gig going to be uh, you know, a 10 by 10 solution or 4 by 25? Uh, all those things have been worked out. And then again, here you see all the nomenclature, the 40 g base KR4. And uh, I have a slide in the back that helps you uh, decipher all that kind of stuff. Here's a, a very extremely complicated slide. And I apologize that it's so uh, dense, but I wanted to put everything on one slide so that it, it makes sense, at least. Um, here's an overview of the architecture. Basically, uh, all the stuff above the Mac is the same, and all the stuff below the Mac changes. So it's the same frame format, um, you know, the same, same um, 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 control and, and all that kind of stuff. The other thing that's changed is that there's some new inter interface definitions below the Mac, and then, of course, uh, higher rates. So the thing that I really want to point out is in these blue circles, which you probably can't see unless you have the presentation in front of you. But uh, this is basically where some of the flexibility is in being able to cope with future technology. So eventually, everyone wants to do 40, 100 gig serial. But unfortunately, it's just not possible with the current technology. So uh, right now, it's going to be a, a multi-lane solution for 40, 100 gig. Eventually, though, we'll get there with technology that will allow us to do it serially. So you can see there's already some provisions in there um, for actually you know, doing uh, multi-lane down to one lane, which would be serial. Um, so the uh, sort of uh, interesting objective that's just uh, completely undefined is provide appropriate support for OTN. We've talked about this a little bit before. Um, basically, 10 gig Ethernet has a what's called the WIZ, which is the WAN interface sublayer. I think that's kind of a fun word to say. 
um, it's missing from 40 and 100 gig because they've taken that out. In 10 gig, it's, it's actually kind of complicated and a little bit awkward because you have to, uh, you know, translate 10 gig Ethernet into sonnet framing, uh, and it doesn't actually run at 10 gig line rate because of the framing. So um, there's been a lot of work between the ITUT and the IEEE to transparently map Ethernet into the sonnet infrastructure. And the other thing I want to point out is I have these little uh, URLs at the bottom which point you to the full presentation. So these are all available to the public if you want to download and read all the details. But uh, basically, it's been worked out between the ITU and the IEEE about how exactly that's going to happen and then uh, who's going to define like how that works. And then the other thing, interesting thing that um, I've always been mentioning is, you know, we want Ethernet to be as reliable and have some of the same characteristics as far as troubleshooting and monitoring that people like about Sonnet. So link fault signaling and those kind of things are feasible. It's not in the specification to work, but there's no reason why that shouldn't work um, for uh, OTN. Okay. Uh, obviously, there is... Uh, Something wrong. Todd? Yeah, you're right. I should have checked these slides. <laughs> okay, um, so let's talk a little bit about the specifics of each type of uh, objective that, and uh, in more detail. And I try to kind of make this applicable to operators, uh, which unfortunately is, is under the text. So the, the backlink solution is kind of interesting, um, not necessarily for, uh, for running a big network, but in terms of what can happen with blade servers and that kind of technology. Uh, this was really um, heavily, I don't want to say pushed, but Intel and some of the, um, the blade uh, server vendors had a big interest in this. And I think it's going to be interesting what the possibilities that we see with uh, high density and, and high capacity blade servers in the future. But basically, this uh, technology is going to auto negotiate from 1 to 40 gigs. So um, as server capacity and, and capabilities increase, I think a blade server is going to be very interesting. Uh, it basically is based on 10G based KR, which is the 10 gig backplane specification, uh, and it does sort of the same things. Now, the one bullet that I kind of want to talk about is influence of Triple E. So, Triple E is uh, a project in the IEEE called Energy Efficient Ethernet, and it's basically um, introducing some new control frames to uh, drop the power when systems are idle to reduce the usage. Um, this will probably have an influence on the backplane technology, you can see if you have a bunch of blade servers that could have a 40 gig capacity and they're not doing anything, it makes sense to kind of drop that uh, utilization or the uh, capacity down to one gig and then raise it again when they're, they're busy talking. Okay, looks like all these are broken. So the uh, copper cable specification uh, basically also reuses 10G based KR and the cable parameters uh, are based on 10G based CX4. I think CX4 is uh, personally a terrible and awkward connector. Uh, I hope we don't have to reuse that, but uh, the cable parameters are based on uh, CX4. It also does odd negotiation. And then the other thing I want to point out is that uh, we're trying to figure out, you know, how to make a connector for this kind of stuff. Uh, so the current proposal is that a four-lane solution would use QSFP. QSFP is the quad SFP. It's a basically a high-density pluggable media that has, you know, four, four lanes in it. And then uh, a 10-lane solution would use something called SFF8092. It's a new small form factor pluggable standard that people are working on. But uh, again, it's just a high-density connector for copper or fiber. Uh, for the 100-meter OM3 multimode fiber solutions, uh, basically it's a, a parallel solution. Um, I, I don't want to say it's a ribbon cable because that kind of, you know, gives people the wrong impression, but it's, it's going to be some sort of high-density fiber connector that would go into a high density connector. And then people have been talking about, you know, well, we want to make things go further than 100 meters. Can we do two, 300? And then the uh, OM4 fiber manufacturers are talking about, well, you know, we could go farther over OM4. So this is possibly one technical objective that still could be amended uh, based on what people are able to actually do when they get uh, some samples working. The 40 kilometer single mode solution. This was uh, one of the heavily debated ones and uh, the bottom line is that uh, it's going to use a CWDM grid and uh, it's going to run on these lambdas. And then the uh, 100 gig single mode solutions. Again, one of the heavily debated um, uh, objectives in the IEEE and uh, this one is going to use the LAN WDM solution. 
And the thing that I want to point out here is that, again, you know, we're talking about flexible architecture and future technology. So right now, if you notice uh, on the back end, going into the block diagram, uh, it's all 10 lanes of, of 10 gigs. So basically, this is based on a 10 gig CERTES and 10 gig uh, electrical technology. So as we get uh, the capability to do faster electrical technology, uh, we can basically whack off the whole back end of that and just do uh, 4 times 20, 25 gig into the uh, block and then uh, that will save a lot of costs and components and things like that. So this is just an example of you know, how technology can change and how this is kind of built to already um, allow for that technology uh, in the future. And then those newer generation uh, components and technology will allow us to drive the cost down. The uh, 100 gig 40 kilometer is basically uh, the same diagram. You notice that there's just an amplifier in there because uh, it has to go further and this uses the same uh, grid spacing. And again, same thing here. We have 10 lanes of 10 gig uh, going into the block and uh, as we have new technology that will allow us just to do 4 by 25. All right, where are we now? So uh, it's almost been three years since uh, I started doing these updates and uh, we're at least halfway there. Uh, again, draft 1.0 is a, is a big, big achievement. And uh, basically, uh, summer of uh, 2010, we'll see the standard. Uh, here's a much more uh, detailed timeline from the IEEE. The things I want to point out here are the uh, draft 1, 2, 0, uh, 2, 0 and 3, 0 uh, dates in here. So when you're talking about, uh, you know, when vendors are going to have technology, uh, kind of keep these dates in mind because these are when the big changes happen. And um, one question, you know, like I said, when are we going to have this? Well, if you look at the timeline, draft 2.0 is going to be the last technical change. Um, so I think people are going to have a reasonably, uh, reasonably good idea of what's going to happen by uh, sort of summer of next year. And then uh, if you figure it takes three to six months to do an ASIC, uh, then ASIC vendors have to sell that to router vendors. Router vendors have to take that, put it on the board. So uh, I think we'll start seeing some, some product out there by end of year 2009. I think that's a pretty reasonable date. Future meetings, um, basically, uh, the meetings are going to get really boring. Um, comment resolution is probably one of the most um, tedious things that I've, that I've ever been through in my entire life. It's basically uh, where you look at every word of the draft and criticize every word. So this is like, you know, there's a comma missing on this sentence. And you know, like a ticket gets open for every comment. And then we all sit in a room and go over it and uh, vote on accepting the changes. And there's a lot of technical changes that happen too. But, I mean, it just, it, you go over it with a fine tooth comb, and uh, that'll take several meetings, actually. Uh, here's the website. Everything, like I said, is public. You can download it and read about it in as much detail as you want. Uh, here's the nomenclature. Uh, this is just for your reference, really, but that explains you know, how we come up with all these fancy uh, nomenclature. And then uh, these last five slides are just you know, the detailed how we get there. Uh, and there's the standard. Yeah. Any questions? Hey, Todd Underwood. Um, there are rumors and insinuations that there are existing vendor implementations. Can you talk about uh, your companies or any of your competitors and what the time scale for that is and whether those are free standards or what, you know, what standard they're implementing to? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's been a lot of demos, and this is good because you know, it's good for people to demo the technology. There's been a lot of, uh, of demos specifically around 100 gig technology, and I say 100 gig technology uh, because that's what it is. It's not 100 gig Ethernet because it's not based on the standard. It can't be Ethernet until the standard is done. But it's good that people are thinking about that technology. Um, you know, again, I would just say that you know, the draft schedule is, is pretty well defined, so draft 1.0. Uh, we have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Draft 2.0, we have a lot better idea. And then draft 3.0, um, you know, the standard is pretty much done. So anything um, that people are talking about right now, uh, I mean, draft 1.0 just came out a, a few weeks ago, so it, it would have to be really pre-standard. Um, so I would, just, uh, I would just caution people to, to use this timeline and, you know, evaluate what vendors are saying. 